Okay, welcome back to Purpose Driven Service Center Dental Assisting, Lesson 2. We're going to talk specifically about general dentistry, and I'm going to give you a real brief introduction of what general dentistry is. Very brief, again, five or ten minutes. So, here are a few specific cases within general dentistry, and we'll dig into each of these a little bit more down the road. But basically when it comes down to it, dentistry is the science that involves the study, treatment, prevention, um, restoration of oral problems. Whether that's teeth, whether that's jaws, whether that's the tongue, um, a lot of these things are specific to dentistry. So let's look at these cases I've got pulled up. On the upper left here we have a cone beam x-ray, a CBCT three-dimensional image um, in the Simplant software, which is a software designed to help uh, position uh, and create a guide uh, to assist in surgically placing a dental implant. Here is a significant makeover uh, procedure that was done. You can see there were six anterior crowns done. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six crowns right there. Here is an orthodontic case that was done without braces. So the patient's primary concern was right down here. You can see one, two, three, four teeth, they were all crooked. I straightened them in one appointment with crowns. So no braces involved, we crowned all these teeth. So one, two, three, four, these are all crowned teeth. And you can see she had some cavities in those teeth, so they definitely warranted some attention. But uh, straightening teeth and restoring teeth and improving smiles, that, that all falls within general dentistry. So this particular case right here this is actually the same case that was in the Simplant software. So this is the guide that was designed with a 3D cone beam x-ray. And there's the implant in place. Um, the scanning body here was, was used um, so that we could, excuse me, facilitate placement of the dental implant and the restoration at the same time. Here you see uh, an implant supported denture, a screwed in denture. Um, some people call this the all on four. Um, this is getting a new set of teeth in a day. Um, great opportunity here. On the upper right, you see this is a root canal procedure with five canals and a lower first molar. Pretty uncommon, very challenging. Um, and then the digital design workflow um, of a single uh, implant crown restoration. So let's take a step back and look at uh, dentistry from prehistory. So if we look at 5000 BC, we have some Sumerian documents that describe and discuss dental problems. Uh, in the 2600s BC, roughly in Egypt, um, generally this Hezi Ray was the first dentist that's acknowledged um, to provide, have to provided treatment. Um, and then a century, uh, a thousand years or so later, sorry, um, the Egyptians document tooth pain and remedies for certain tooth pain. Hippocrates and Aristotle write about dentistry in 500 to 200 BC. Um, and then 100 BC, the Roman Celsus writes extensively about dentistry. Um, then AD, we know uh, shortly after um, the 100 to 200 AD range, the Etruscans practiced dentistry with gold teeth. And then in China, uh, the first dental amalgam was designed in China, a silver paste for filling tooth, uh, teeth. Um, the first dental book was published in Germany in 1530. Um, 1723, Pierre Fauchard, the father of modern dentistry, describes or publishes rather, The Surgeon Dentist, A Treatise on Teeth. John Baker was officially the first American dentist to practice in America, and Paul Revere um, offered his dental services and forensics. Um, in 1790, the first dental drill with a foot pedal was designed, um, and the dental chair was invented. First female dental assistant in 1885, and then in 1895, we had the advent of x-rays by William Runt. Um, and then in the 1960s is when four-handed dentistry with a dentist and a dental assistant really started to jump out. It's a long history of de dentistry developing, developing over the ages, right? Um, lots of history here. So let's talk about the dentist. What type of education is required to become a dentist? Uh, there's a lot. Um, in the United States is what we're focusing on. In different countries, um, there are some different requirements. But in the United States, generally speaking, you need a high school degree of some sort, um, college degree, usually in biology and chemistry to get the necessary prerequisites done, um, and then a dental school. 
um, and dental programs that I'm familiar with are four years. Now, there are some programs, I think they're phasing them out, where it's six years, six, that's six, right? Six years, um, where you go straight from high school into a six-year program that gets you a bachelor's degree and also your dental degree in six years, rather than the normal eight years it would take to get a bachelor's degree and a dental degree. Um, and this I just pulled off of uh, the internet the other day. The average student loan debt in 2016 was $261,000 when they graduate from dental school. And that sounds about average to me. I graduated again in 2006. Um, that number would make sense um, to me and to a lot of my um, compadres who graduated with me. Colleagues, rather. So this is my graduation when I uh, got hooded and capped uh, as a dentist, my DDS degree. Long road to get there. Very long road. Um, okay, so let's talk about the dental specialists, a little bit of specifics within general dentistry. Um, so there's a general dentist, which we know, kind of like a family physician, will do everything, if you will. Um, there's a prosthodontist, which I mentioned earlier, who generally deals with the most complicated of either one full mouth or really complex dental treatments. So that's called a prosthodontist. Um, an orthodontist, you've probably heard of, is someone who straightens teeth, braces and Invisalign and um, other uh, alternatives to Invisalign. Um, the endodontist is a root canal specialist. There are a lot of dentists who will do a lot of root canals, and I'm one of those dentists. But there are some dentists who will not do root canals at all, or will only do some root canals. Um, and then most of us, if there's a really complicated uh, root canal procedure, either a retreatment or a post um, that needs a retreatment or some uh, challenging issue, whether it's a separated instrument, etc., um, most of us will often refer those patients out to a specialist, someone who's got additional training in that particular field. Um, a periodontist, this is a gum disease and implant specialist, someone who trains specifically after getting a DDS or DMD degree, they'll do two or three more years to get a gum disease specialty degree. Um, an oral surgeon generally does the bone work, tooth removal, implants, and a lot of times um, they'll do your wisdom teeth removals um, almost exclusively. So, as we talked before, the general dentist, it's a four-year uh, four high school naturally, four years of college for an undergrad usually, four years of dental school. And everything else below here is added on to that. So the prosthodontist is two or three years. Orthodontist, again, is two or three more years. Um, endodontist, two or three more years. Periodontist, two or three more years. Uh, the oral surgeon is either four more years or six more years, depending on if they want to just get the OMFS, the oral and maxillofacial surgery training certificate, or if they want to get an MD or DO on top of their DDS degree. Um, so these oral surgeons generally are very, very well trained and have hospital privileges and you know have a physician's degree. So they're in a kind of a different class than us general, regular general dentists are. But these are the specialties involved in general dentistry. Let's talk about this mouth-body connection. So we know from um, studies that have been released recently in the past few years, as well as as late as two or three weeks ago in 2017 in November, that there's a significant connection of what's going on in your mouth to what's happening in the rest of your body, specifically when it pertains to your stroke and heart disease risk. We know that the bacteria that cause gum disease can significantly affect our over, overall health. We know that dental abscesses can potentially be life-threatening because of their location in relation to the maxillary sinus and a pathway into the brain. Not only that, but septicemia and bacteremia in the bloodstream from an untreated dental abscess can lead to significant long-term problems. So we know now that general dentistry is becoming more and more critical not only to treat teeth, but also to help prevent significant systemic problems with regard to gum disease and tooth decay leading to potential abscesses. So lots and lots of information out there um, supporting this mouth-body connection. Um, and I hope in the not too distant future that um, general dentists and physicians will be teaming up in group practices to help provide a significant benefit to their patients with regard to treating the whole body. Okay. So let's look at this graph real quick. Um, this is a, how the supply of dentists in the United States is likely to grow. So why am I bringing this up? Because as a dental assistant, as someone who's interested in, in dental assisting, this is only good news for you. 
the supply of dentists is just going to continue to go up and up and up, um, which means more and more dental assistants are going to need, uh, going to be needed. So, um, Resources and Services Administration estimates that there is a current shortage of 7,300 dentists in the United States. Um, and we know here that uh, there are active licensed dentists in 2018 estimated to be 205,000 dentists. So that's a great opportunity for dental assisting jobs. So lots of dentists, lots of dental assisting jobs, and there's a shortage of dentists. I mean, I know we've personally in my practice in, in uh, the St. Louis area have experienced a significant shortage from time to time with good, well-trained dental assistants. So great opportunities. So let's take a look at this exercise. Considering how far dentistry has come, what will it be like in five to 10 years? What meaningful impact could you potentially have on dentistry in your particular realm and as a whole? And how critical is oral health to systemic or whole body health? Take a minute, ponder over these questions, write down your thoughts. Um, thanks again for watching. This is the end of lesson two uh, in the uh, dental assisting, purpose-driven dental assisting lecture course. Um, this is the general dentistry overview. So I will see you in lesson three. Thank you.